the purpose of the Lord will stand. That's not a sermon title. That's a proclamation. We know that what the Lord has in mind will not fail. We're going to be looking into uh, uh, Hebrews. Well, excuse me. The text is going to be out of 1 Peter 1, so you can turn there. But also, too, I'm going to be taking a side tri trip into Hebrews 11, right at the first verse. And so you may want to just put your finger in both of those. But I'm going to start out with a different story. This is borrowed from my son. He lets me keep it right above my desk. This tells the story that I need to know. Two men and Jesus Christ. And it shows here. I'm not sure if you can see it so well. So I'm just going to demonstrate it. There's Jesus Christ honoring the Father. And the one thief who said no, who mocked God. And there is the other, a reflection of Jesus Christ. Even at the last hour, even knowing that all he did, and he knew it, but he confessed that he needed a savior. That's my confession too. Let's go ahead and look at our text and starting at the first verse. And it says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are the elect exiles in the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for the obedience to Jesus Christ, and for the sprinkling of his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. At first, it sounds like just a greeting. And because, and also, too, not being a good linguist, I had to look and say, what is it? Whoa, 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 what did this mean? So instead of trying to interpret it my way, I decided to go look at a couple other translations. And one says, from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to God's chosen people who live as refugees scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. You were chosen according to the purpose of God the Father and were made a holy people by his spirit to obey Jesus Christ and be purified by his blood. May grace and peace be yours in full measure. Looking into another translation, it puts it this way. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience in sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. I'm looking at this and I'm saying there's a foreknowledge of God, there's a plan, he has a plan, and what happens is I can't quite explain things very well, so I thought I'd get some help. What you're looking at here is a timeline of history. Let's come all the way over here. You are here. You're off the chart. What happens, we went beyond the chart makers things. Uh, what's, what's kind of interesting is to go look and, and see what they considered significant at the time this was written. They said, uh, look at the difference between Columbus left um, over in Europe, and over here we have the transatlantic cable. That's, that's the thing. Instead of going by, by uh, horse car, uh, ox cart, we travel by train. And it goes, it goes like this. And I'm saying, well, boy, that sounds kind of ancient to me. That, and we're only this little bit over. To give you an idea of the scale that we're looking at, This much here is 100 years. 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. Now, I just want to go all the way back here for a moment so that we understand thousands of years, not millions, by the account of all the people that we have through the Bible. 
thousands. Now we come all the way forward again, and we say, boy, I am so modern. I can't believe I am so different than here. We're only different in the technologies. We're not different as people. We still plant. We still need to eat. We still socialize. We still do all the things that the people have done all through the ages. Now, knowing that these are hundreds of years, the central, the most important portion for mankind happened here at the cross. As a matter of fact, it was so important that we started count, counting our calendar again from that point. That's why we say it's 2,000 years here, 4,000 years from the beginning. The other thing that this chart shows me is like it was kind of interesting to go and you say, um, how far over is the Old Testament? And look how long was covered by the Old Testament. Some of this was because, look at the lifespans. The lifespan of Adam. The lifespan of Noah. And God changed things. We read that, that the, the number of years for man is decreased. And we saw that with Abram and Sarah, Jacob, Isaac. Even Moses, small lifespan compared to here. But the important thing to know is way back here, Genesis 1.1, God created. God, God created with a purpose in mind, and he went to the point on the day where he created man and he created woman and he said and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and after them that have dominion over the and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and we see that even in our day, that we are the masters. God proclaimed it. And so God created man in his own image, and he created him, them male and female and blessed them. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Be fruitful and multiply. Look at all these branches. All the branches of, of families, all the branches of those that, that had, of, had importance. And it even gets to the point where we can't even follow individuals. We're following whole countries. God's word. He said, be fruitful and multiply, and we have. But that's not the only portion of things. That doesn't describe entirely the purpose of the Lord. When he created man, he walked with man in the garden. Adam, can you imagine sitting there, walking around with God, talking about the trees or this or whatever, having a time together, a personal time, a t basically having the time of your life with him. And then, all spoiled, all spoiled by mankind. And we know the fall, we know the story there, so I'm not gonna have to go too far to be able to show you that. But that happened way back. But here's the important part. God didn't just throw away his children. We know from the scriptures that Jesus had said, God can raise up worshipers out of the stones if he wanted to. But he didn't, because he wants these people from here all the way down. That includes you and me, no matter how much 
I may not feel so. God is looking for you. He's waiting for you. Excuse me. See, now God's plan didn't end here. He knew, he foreknew that we needed a Savior. He told all about it. He told these people. He told all the way through. And then he came here at this point. And when we were looking at Peter's introduction in his letter, he was telling them, do you see this? God wants you. He's saying, Peter, someone who has seen Jesus Christ, to those who are exiles, refugees, strangers, from where? The place of their birth. They became strangers and pilgrims. This is better explained by running over into Hebrews. Let's go ahead and um, turn to Hebrews uh, 11.1. One One of my favorites. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, for conviction of things not seen. For if by the people of old received their commendation, by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen is not made out of things that are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain throughout which... Uh, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by his, uh, the accepting of his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. An important point this morning to recognize This is what God has. This is his purpose in order to bring us to him. It goes on talking about Noah, who with his whole family was saved. He goes on and talks about Abraham, who when he was called out to go to a place that he was to, uh, to receive as an inheritance, like we are way out there, And when he went, not knowing where he was going, by faith he went and lived in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him to the same um, promise, which is why we hear the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham. We hear those names over and over again because it was a point that was, look at this, so close to Noah, how God wants his people. But all these died in faith. Let's just pick an arbitrary point and look all the way back. All these died in faith. Not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land in which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God for he has prepared for them a city. This is different than me saying that I'm a Christian. This is saying that God is looking on us and saying, I'm his. I'm his Christian. I'm his little Christ. Let's go back to 1 Peter. It 
And so now after he has greeted the people of God, he goes on to say and talk about being born to a living hope. Let's listen to what he has to say. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who, by God's power, are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. Just stop for a second and just say, look at what, what God is doing. And he's all, how, many, how much we can see that God wants us. That if you have not confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Savior and Lord, the whole package. The window of opportunity is not ended. The reason we know that is because John 3.16, for God sent his son. Why? So that none would perish. None. No matter how far out God chooses to extend this. But when God returns, just like the edge of the paper, time's done. So if you have not, and you hear the Spirit calling you, talk to someone today. As a matter of fact, if somebody wants to confess this morning, I'll stop talking. Because that's more important than what I'd have to say. But now, for those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord, what this means is we can rejoice because there is nothing, nothing that can take us from the palm of God's hand. Sure, I could jump out, but I don't have to fear that something is going to remove me from God's plan. Let's go on to verse 6. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the testing, so the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating um, when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you, and the things that have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which the angels long to look. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory, I'm sorry, I'm reading cross pages, so finishing with 12, it was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you, the things that they have now announced to you through those who have preached the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things unto which the angels wish to look into. The purpose of the Lord, to redeem mankind, to bring them back into the original state, to make it so that he would walk with, that we could walk with him, that we would be able to even withstand God's presence. The very thing that Moses had difficulty with could only see the back of God. Even Moses didn't fully see everything. So it's no surprise that I have a little doubt sometimes when I don't see him like I think I should. But then I remember, I remember Robert, Albert, T, 
Tim, Paul, people that I've known that have reflected God and his personality. Seeing God through the people that he has already called. The reason that I can see that is because of the like spirit that we have. There's one more piece. If God made robots, we would have no choice to just do what he says. That is not what God is looking for. He's looking for the same relationship that I have with my wife. That close relationship closer than I could ever have imagined and has gone closer and closer through the years. The relationship that knows my heart, knows my needs better than I do, and will fill them. Who doesn't want that kind of a relationship? It would have to be the fool who says there is no God. But there's more. God doesn't want half of us. Meaning, he doesn't want half of Joe, some of Joe. He wants all of Joe. He wants me to be complete. The one thing I can trust is that he's going to be faithful to complete the work in me. We've, written, we've heard those verses, so we know it's true. But when it comes to looking at heaven, who wouldn't want to go there? But there's more than just desiring to go to heaven. That's not why God brought these people to heaven. It's because they were looking for God. They search for God. And we also know that if we seek, we'll find. If we knock, it'll open, etc. What that means is we have only one thing to be concerned with, looking for God. He'll teach us. He'll help us. Just like that relationship with my wife, he wants to give us all things that are good, every good and perfect gift. Now, those who decide that um, there's been times when, let me put, uh, I'm, instead of blaming somebody else, I wanted to avoid this, but I'm going to point the fingers here. The times that I wanted to obey only for the purpose of avoiding the punishment will not get me to heaven. I know that. It's, it's those that want God. We know that if I o- obey just to try and um, avoid punishment, doesn't bring about the change that needs to be done in me. And I'm basing that on, on things like Hebrews, where it says, strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. There's been times that I have been afraid to give myself fully to God. But yet I know I need to. I need to because of the warning in Revelation where it says, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, and their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. That means there's one more piece to be done. If you look at the the subsection of the next piece in Peter, 
So it's called to be holy. And it begins with, therefore, prepare your minds for action. It says that there's more. As we're called, it's not just a once and done. It's a relationship. God's not finished with me yet either. And what happens is that's good because I still have to reign in my temper. I still have to reign in my tongue. I still have work to do because there's some things that I left undone that I should have done. And there's some things, of course, that I left behind that I don't want to do again. Let's go ahead and look at what God is looking for in his people. Verse 13. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you by the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as though who are called who but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, that the lamb without blemish or spot, if he was for foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding of uh, word of God, for all flesh is, is grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls. But the word of the Lord remains forever, and this is the good news that was preached to you. Just to review, God created man in his own image to be with him so that we could walk with him. Not only there, all the way through. He brought Jesus Christ, our Lord, to redeem us, to bring us back to the holiness that we need. He's given us the opportunity. Now it's our part to run with it, to do this, to live holy for him, to go beyond ourselves, to let the Spirit use us, to take hold of that salvation that God has given us. And I'll conclude with this. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, the purpose of the Lord will stand. <laughs>